Have you ever wondered what the differences were between the LZ0 and the LM2? Well, since I've got an LZ0 disassembled here, I figured I would just outline all of this stuff over here, and we'll go ahead and do a breakdown of all of the differences between the LM2 and the LZ0. This is the engine oil cooler right there. A lot of people don't know, but that's different on the LZ0. Let's start with the engine block itself, because this is a significant upgrade here. They retained the aluminum engine block, however, went with larger steel sleeves, and that's because they house these new steel pistons. This bolt design, this is a stepped piston with a bolt design. We're gonna get to that a little bit later, because I have one pulled out, we're gonna get a little bit closer look onto that. Engine block itself changed right back here. Engine coolant temp sensor five is now eliminated. Engine coolant temp sensor five. Going over to the cylinder head, which is right here. The cylinder head is also redesigned. We can see that there's actually a missing degas port. We still have one, but we don't have the other one. That was removed. The intake valves are actually longer on the LZ0 than they are on the LM2, which tells us that there's some sort of redesign more so within the cylinder head itself. The intake camshaft is revised. It actually has a different profile to it. So there is more airflow and that trends with the larger turbocharger. Also not shown here because I don't have one, but increased airflow with the newer turbocharger. It's larger internally and able to flow more air. The oil pump belt for model year 2023, which is when the LZ0 came out, that's actually when they went to a 200,000 mile interval instead of the 150,000 miles. So the belt didn't change itself, but the interval did. This is our timing chain. In 2020, the LM2 came out with a very flawed design timing chain. So in 2021, they actually revised it to where that we have these holes in there. The initial 2020 trucks did not have those holes in there. So I believe, what engineering found out was that there was a lack of lubrication on this timing chain. So they had to go to a slightly different design, whereas it has the holes in there to attract the oil to get inside. And the metal is a little bit different, a little bit stronger. So these are a beefier timing chain. This did not change for the LZ0. However, it did carry over and we did still retain the good timing chain. Speaking of timing, the reluctor changed, but not as many have thought as well as myself. When I pulled this apart, there is a newer, even updated design of this, and that is where it's fully cast. This one is still stamped steel, and it still gets the job done. It's actually beefier than the LM2. The LM2 has holes in it, and it's uh, significantly more flimsy. So this is definitely a beefy upgrade. Glow plugs have changed. You cannot cross over the LM2 to the LZ0 glow plug, so do not try. There's a difference there. Fuel injectors, with the new piston bowl design, they actually had to change the way that these injectors flow as well as the spray pattern because it's all relevant to the way that it sprays on top of the piston. As you can see, the step design, we're gonna get into this in just a second, but injectors, the bodies are the same as the LM2, but you cannot swap them over. So I strongly suggest you do not try because it's not going to work out very well. Pistons. All new steel piston. This is heavier. For those of you wondering, what does this piston weigh? 1,693 grams. So let's kick it over. Three pounds and 11.7 ounces. Wow, that's a beefy piston right there. So by going to a steel piston over the aluminum piston, they were actually able to squeeze down the piston. And that's just because the steel is stronger. So this is much more robust. Now, if you've seen my video where I tore down the LM2, you'll be able to see on the LM2, the second piston ring, at least with that engine that I tore down, was seized solid. And there was a bunch of buildup and carbon buildup on there. It's not moving. So we did have a little something going on there. With these new steel pistons, not seeing that one bit. And that's a huge plus. But back to the piston itself. It is a shorter skirt, shorter piston. And with it all being shorter, the wrist pin is actually moved up into the piston more than the LM2. The LM2 piston is actually significantly longer. By doing that, they had to change the connecting rod. So the connecting rod is actually longer only because it needs to get to the wrist pin to maintain everything. So the displacement did not change. It's just the piston design changed itself. Steel pistons are the way to go. Now, Going to the front of the piston, you could see this dished design on it. You've got a dish and you've got the step. The step is actually critical as it helps to lower the knocks 
And it also, there's greater thermal stability with the use of steel pistons. They did bump it up from a 15 to 1 compression ratio to 15.2 to 1. That's even with the thicker head gasket. So um, something to keep in mind there. All right, so there's four, five, six, seven layers. And that's a significant upgrade in there that I'm stoked that we have these on our diesels. Now, as you can see, the rings are working flawless. This design, awesome. Engine oil cooler. I don't know if anybody's discussed this, but uh, my bad for not bringing it up. This is a larger cooler right there. This is a three inch cooler, whereas the LM2 was only two and a half inches long. So gaining a half an inch on the cooler, that allows for better oil cooling, obviously. Now with that, when we go to the engine block, there's actually enhanced oiling as well as cooling throughout this block. So there are significant changes within this block that we cannot see right here from the outside. Let's go to the water pump. The water pump was actually revised just slightly. It's got a larger impeller. So it's going to increase the coolant flow, which is another significant improvement. Speaking of coolant flow, coolant control valve. So this is the new updated design coolant control valve for the LZ0. The LM2 I actually just happen to have right here. Look at this whole conglomeration of extra useless stuff. So what they found with the LZ0 is that they actually enhanced the cooling so well that they don't need all of these extra outlets. So they went to this design. Now, I'm sure everyone's wondering, is this improved? Well, let me tell you, the flaw of this was the motors and the gears themselves. Whereas the flaw of this coolant control valve is actually they break internally. LZ0 coolant control valve here. You can see the way that this works is it just rotates. This is a failed one, but I'm sure you already see what the failure is with this. Dislodged it, but there you go right there, LZ0, that is our failure. Yes, it's better, but it's also worse in some ways, but it is completely revised. Now, as you can see, we have the fuel rail here. This is not different. However, what is different is fuel pressure regulator too. There's a different connector style there. So I don't know what other changes there are to this, but externally, this all looks the same. The fuel pressure sensor is actually the same connector as well. The glow plugs change, we discussed that, fuel injectors. We've discussed all the changes on the engine itself. Like I said, we did not get into emissions. There are emissions changes, which will come in a later video. If you found this useful, be sure to share it. See you next time.